Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to Hack My Growth. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the importance of data quality. Hey, thanks again for watching. If this is your first time, maybe you've been watching a while but haven't yet subscribed, please do so right now. We would love to have you join part of our community. All you got to do is hit the button and below the video. All right, so today we're talking about data quality. Now that may seem like a boring topic right off the bat, especially if you're more on the creative end, right? You're, you're a content writer or uh, you're more interested in the creative elements of digital marketing. But if you wanna do data-backed experiments or if you wanna really know um, if what you're doing is working, having the right data is essential. Now for me, I, I'm naturally more of a creative, but I'm also very intrigued by data and numbers and knowing what works and what doesn't work. And this is kind of what's led me on this journey to learn more about BI, you know, going back to school and taking some classes around it. That way I can run experiments more effectively and know if my work is actually generating real results. Now there's an old adage, it says garbage in, garbage out. That means if you fill your analytics software or you fill your, your business intelligence tool with bad data, you're going to get bad answers. You're not going to get the answers you want. It doesn't matter if you have a lot of numbers. If the numbers don't line up or the numbers were recorded wrong or maybe there's errors in your numbers, you're not going to get the right answer. So you're really not going to know if what you're doing is working or isn't working. So this is the importance. Whether you're using Google Analytics, whether you're paying for uh, an expensive business intelligence software, it doesn't matter what your solution is or how much you paid for it. If you have bad data, you're going to get the wrong answers. So how do we get the right data? How do we know if we have the data we need to answer the questions we want to answer? Well, Stephen Covey has an amazing book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of the habits is beginning with the end in mind. Now, this is the same uh, advice I want to give to you. When you're doing a data-backed experience or if you're, you're trying to set up your analytics for them to make sense for you, know why you want those analytics. Know what questions you're trying to sol uh, solve problems for, what answers that you want to, to get. And when you understand what you want, you can then reverse engineer the process and understand what you need. Now, there's a little bit of a flow chart here. It's just four things and four questions that you want to ask in kind of this reversed order. Um, instead of you know setting up and testing, you want to really start with the end in mind. So what do you want to figure out? Do you want to learn what your website users are doing, uh, your app users are doing, people uh, working on a phone? Is this for uh, financial numbers? What are you trying to solve? What problems are, are you trying to find answers for? Once you've understood that, the next step is what data will help you find those answers? A lot of times we're collecting data we don't need or data that really has very little value to our business. Well, we're collecting it just because we can. Now, in some cases, this is good because you can find really interesting um, nuggets of information you wouldn't have otherwise found. But the reality is, is 90% of what we're collecting is trash. It's, it's just not useful, really, in any business sense. So knowing what you actually need to collect is, is going to be important because then you can put um, precedence on those, those uh, entities, those attributes, those metrics that you really need to know something about and make sure that you're collecting that data the right way and collecting it cleanly. Then you've got to know, how can I access this data? Is it website users? Can I use Google Analytics? Is it financial numbers? Do I need to have uh, financial software like QuickBooks or FreshBooks or something along that line? Um, is it something a little bit more abstract where I need to find a specialized tool to really get those informations? Do I need to use uh, a scraper and extract that um, information from a website? Where is this data that you need at? And then the next step is how do you get it? <laughs> so setting up and, and testing. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll put a tracking code on our site. Maybe we've, uh, we've got a new product. Maybe we're using HubSpot or Google Analytics or um, maybe we were using this you know, um, specialized BI program where we're tracking and setting up information that's dumping into our, into our analytics software, to our database. But we don't really take time to test to make sure that the data's right. And this is where a lot of the problems happen. This is where the problems have happened for me before, where I'm collecting all this data, but maybe we've set something up wrong or we're getting the wrong data, and now it's really useless. I mean, I see this all the time when we implement uh, maybe Google Analytics and Tag Manager. Well, then you have two Google Analytics scripts running, one in Tag Manager, one in Analytics, and now your bounce rate's all off, or you're not collecting hits the right way, and your traffic's just wrong because you, you've, you've got two different scripts that are contradicting each other, and now you're not getting the numbers you need, the information you need. So this happens because we don't test. So we should put things into test environments, see how they're responding, see what information we're getting back, and then execute. The worst thing that happens is you install a tracking code on a website, think you're collecting information, come back 30 days later and realize it was wrong and the tracking information was off. 
Unfortunately, that's happened to me more than once. That's where often you learn these things are by the mistakes where you set something up, you go to look at the information, it's not there or it's not the information you thought you were getting because you, you didn't take the step to say, what do I need? Uh, what's the data that I need? Well, where is it at? And then setting it up and testing it to make sure that it works. Another thing that I see that happens, especially today, we have so many different tools, so many different programs out there. And these are really great tools. And most of the BI tools out there are front end tools. They're tools that are going to help you visualize your data, or display your data in a visually appealing way. We end up making really cool graphs that people still don't understand. We make really cool graphs that we don't understand. Um, and we assume that these all-in-one tools are going to solve all of our problems. But a lot of times, the all-in-one tool isn't really an all-in-one tool. We assume that if we buy the subscription, that automatically our data is going to show up in the right place and it's going to do what we want to do. I've been looking to automate this process myself, and I'm sure there are ways to automate it, and I know there are ways to, to automate it, but it's typically very siloed into different stages, you know, where you're extracting the data, then you're loading it into a, a data mart or a data warehouse, and then you're pulling that data into your different, you know, front end tools. And that's a very, very narrow look, you know, very <laughs> not really into the details of what's going on, but each one of those processes is extremely important. But we assume that we have, you know, an all in one tool quote unquote, all in one tool, and it's just going to do everything for us. Our data is going to be clean, it's going to go into the right place, and we're going to easily be able to find it. Well, that's not really the case um, all of the time, or most of the time, because BI can be pretty complex, but you can simplify it by getting the numbers that you need, instead of overloading yourself with stuff you don't need, overloading yourself with tools you don't need. Oftentimes, you know, we're, we're using a jackhammer to solve a problem that we, we could have easily fixed with just a, a small hammer and tapping on that nail a little bit. So before you invest in these big tools and these big all-in-one solutions, make sure you know what you really need. Make sure you know where that data is at. Make sure that you're pulling that data out in a way that it's going to be quality data. Uh, and then you can actually find the, the, the answers that you're looking for. Data quality gets way harder the more and more you add to your business intelligence process, to your analytics process. But if you can slow it down and just really start with what you need, you're going to find that, that keeping that data at a quality level is going to be much easier. There is no such thing as set it and forget it when it comes to BI. Things are moving too fast. Data changes, user behavior changes. You need to make a tweak to your study. And really, if you're doing this more from an agile standpoint where you're running sprints and you're testing different uh, aspects of your marketing campaign or your business and you want to be able to, to test them quickly, get information quickly and pivot quickly, you can't set it and forget it because you need to begin to access this data and, and looking at these decisions and be able to make decisions uh, fast. But the only way you can do that is if you have good data. And that means you have to set up the process in the right way in order for you to extract the value you need out. So if you've got any more questions, maybe you have questions on Google Analytics, that's one of my favorite tools. And the Google Cloud environment is a very powerful environment. It's free, it's not set it in, forget it. There are some tools that can automate it and help you work a lot more efficiently inside of there. So if you've got questions and want help setting this up, please let us know. We would love to help you get on the right foot. Or how does this actually impact a marketing campaign? Again, please comment below, give us some questions. We would love to help you in this process and make sure that you get the most information that you can to make intelligent decisions to grow your marketing campaigns and your business. Until next time, uh, happy marketing and thanks for watching.